I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. Our work can be seen on film, Broadway, and at Renaissance festivals around the country. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. Looking at the comments in the videos, we noticed a lot of fans requested this build. I think you guys were trying to stump us, but we figured out a way to make this huge blade happen. For the build on the Berserk Sword, we decided we'd use 138 pound per yard railroad track. Sam uses the oxypropane torch to cut the cap rail off the track. This track section will become the blade of this sword. This is the railroad track that we're using for the Berserk Sword. We're utilizing the cap that we've cut from the foot and the web. And that piece is about 55 pounds. So the torch cut on the cap rail is really rough. So now we're gonna grind that. So during the forging, we don't get any cold shut. Sam grinds away right along the edge of the cut line from the torch. Baby smooth. <laughs> we don't have any tongs large enough to hold this piece of track. So Sam welds on a handle that'll allow us to control this piece of metal when it's red hot and we have to move it around the shop. To reduce such a large piece of steel, we take it to our hydraulic press. We did the math on the cylinder size and the pump pressure, and uh, it makes about 80 to 85 tons, which is just about enough pressure to crush anything you can think of. You'll see that we change dies on the press. This is done so that we can break down the bar faster by having a smaller area that we're pressing on. Then we'll go back to a larger, flatter area that will allow us to smooth the entire piece, making the bar easier for when we begin the blade work. So with Kerry and Ilya's help, we've roughly drawn out the billet to its rough dimension. Now we're going to do the final sizing using a specialty die under the press that has two half-inch stop locks because I want the finished thickness to be half an inch before grinding in the distal taper. The half inch allows us to size the entire thickness of the billet to an even half inch over its entire length. And then we'll go back and take the width using the side of one of our other dies to keep everything even and smooth. Using the treadle hammer setting on the iron kiss, Sam cuts the tip off of the sword. Using the oxypropane torch, Sam takes the temporary handle off the berserk sword. So we remove the handle so that it's easier to maneuver into and out of the forge and into and out of the press. We're at the right length. We're going to spring fuller in, draw the tank. Now we've got the blade drawn out to length, Sam begins to forge the tip. Sam makes sure his blade blank is straight and true before moving on to hand beveling. Sam's hand beveled hundreds of blades, but I don't think he's ever tackled one this big. It's going to take dozens of heats, lots of concentration, and a whole lot of strength to get this one done. So you'll see Ilya do a lot of wet forging. That's a technique made popular by the Japanese. Here in America, we like to do Tennessee wet forging. I take a piece of two and a half inch diameter 12L14 steel and slice it down the middle to create a fuller die. And what we're gonna do is blend this corner out here so that it doesn't make a sharp shoulder when these get pressed into the blade hot this way. Sam takes the two pieces from the fullering die and welds a spring in between them, making a spring swage. This will allow us to put the fuller in the berserk sword using the hydraulic press. Just enough clearance in there to get it started, but that it'll hold it firmly so that I know where that fuller will be located on the stock. Using two and a half inch round fullering dies, Sam forges in the fuller in the center of the blade. I will later on use a grinder to true this up, but he's gonna rough in the shape to save me a lot of time. The double helix Zelda sword was the most complex shape I've ever had to grind, but this is by far the heaviest blade I've ever attempted. This process is gonna take me a couple hours, 
so I move slow and steady to make sure I don't mess up. I removed about 10 pounds of metal from this blade already. Still really heavy. Now that I have my central fuller ground in the blade, it's time to do the edging. The massive length of this blade is a real challenge. I brace the blade on my shoulder and slowly pass it down the grinding wheel. When we purchased the material for this pommel, the idea is that we could cut it all to shape and keep it nice and clean. Well, this is Sam's build and he's a blacksmith. That just doesn't work for him. He's got to have that piece hot and formed under the press. When we were first approached about doing this build, I made the boys a little bet. I said if you guys can figure out how to forge it and get it heat treated, I'll figure out how to grind it. Maybe I should have kept my mouth shut. The design of this furnace we're using is actually called a muffle furnace. It's a pipe within a refractory shell that insulates whatever goes into the pipe from direct heat and flame. It keeps a nice, even, neutralizing atmosphere. Slowly, slowly, nice and easy. Time. Heat treating this massive sword is the riskiest part of this process. Elliot and Kerry use two supports to raise the blade up and lower it into the forge. Nice and slow. A little slower, Kerry. This is the Berserk Dragon Slayer sword. It's so big that we have to fabricate a specialty quench tank for it to be used in the hardening process. John, our head welder, is fabricating that from a piece of six inch square structural tubing. So it's been about five minutes. The blade's already starting to glow. We'll let it get a nice heat soak before we okay. take it out for the quench. Pull the bolt, step down, move the chair back so I'm far enough away, okay? Then you guys lift. Ready? This is by far One, the most three. risky process One, of the whole sword making. Two, three. This is the most dangerous quench we've ever done in this shop. The mass of this bleed going in into the oil could be frightening. This is the moment of truth. Keep coming, that's a good rate. Just keep coming. We're good all the way down. Yep. I'll admit, I thought I might need my brown pants, but I didn't. No. Sam uses a bunch of Scotch-Brite pads stacked up on a hand drill to smooth out the finish of the blade. John cuts the pieces for the guard. There'll be multiple overlays with lots of rivets, and everything has to look just right, so the sizing is very important. After cutting the guard pieces to length on the saw, John moves to the grinder to knock off the corners. Using the mill, John drills the holes on the sword guard. This will be where we place our rivets. So we're going to weld the guard on the Berserk Sword. Welding to high carbon steel uh, that railroad track is made of makes for some different problems that we have to deal with. Due to the heat sink effect, we have to preheat that so that that effect is lessened and then post heat. Just the sheer size of this sword made it a very difficult build. In the end, I think we created something that the black swordsman himself would be proud to wield. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.